my name is uh, Jonas Kramer and I'm a cloud solution specialist at Autodesk and I'm just co-hosting co this session with my uh, colleague Yves. Yves, can you present yourself? Yeah, absolutely, Jonas. So my name is Yves Fjellart, I'm a technical sales within Autodesk. I'm uh, focusing on the data management and collaborative aspects of our portfolio within, within Autodesk. But for the next uh, well, let's see, 55 minutes, we're going to be talking about, uh, well, as the title suggests, obviously. So we're going to be looking at, actually, um, people do have data, of course. They have legacy data. And uh, what we've seen in the previous uh, webinars or what we've been focusing on is sort of uh, BIM 360 next genifuel. So uh, a, a single source of truth in the cloud, which is focused and geared towards the whole of the AC industry. And that's uh, obviously from my point of view, that's that's a great tool. Um, but the reality is that you're going to have legacy data, as I mentioned. It's going to sit on, on service. It's going to sit on uh, on SharePoint environments, FTP sites, et cetera, et cetera. So really, this, this session is all about, well, <clears throat> in the last sessions, we've seen how BIM 360 is working. Let's now see how we can connect the, um, the legacy data into BIM 360. So, uh, essentially, as far as the agenda is concerned, um, of course, there's a lot of functionality out there, some great functionality out there. So we're, we can't obviously cover all um, tools that are out there. But what we are going to do is we're going to just uh, to get everyone on the same level, just uh, refocus a little bit, a couple of slides on BIM 360. So where are we going with this? But then from another disk point of view, we do have an on-premise solution, which is called Autodesk Fault. So um, I'm gonna uh, show a couple of things inside of Autodesk Fold. Uh, and then we're sort of gonna tie the two together. So BIM 360 with Autodesk Fold, which is really the, the mixed environment. Um, I think also, if you look at uh, some of the tools out there, some of them are already cloud-based, like for instance, or such as uh, SharePoint. So we're, uh, we're gonna be looking at a tool that we've developed, which is called Autodesk Construction Cloud Connect or ACC Connect. And then some of the third-party applications that actually have been built with Forge, Forge that I've talked uh, a little bit about during the digital twin session. So we're not going to spend too much time on actually what is Forge, but we're going to look at some of the third-party applications that have been developed on top of Forge to extract data out of um, out of other solutions, if you will. And then in the end, of course, QA. So BIM 360, so just to reiterate, essentially what we've been building over the last couple of years is a tool that will connect everyone together in the cloud, uh, specifically for AC projects, so architecture, engineering, and construction. And as we all know, uh, that's a very mixed environment in its own right. You have architects, structural engineers, MEP engineers, probably split out into HVAC, uh, piping, plumbing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we do need to get this thing built in the end. So we're going to be looking at contractors, subcontractors, and finally we do a handover. So uh, traditionally we've seen that there is a lot of data that is uh, being dumbed down, if you will, between transitions or cross transitions, um, where we just basically send out, you know, DWFs or PDFs, or uh, maybe it's an NWC file from Navisworks or an IFC file or whatever. Um, so what we've been building as, as Autodesk is this single source of truth, which uh, enriches that data the whole time uh, through security on top of uh, BIM 360 folders and through some uh, specific communication pro protocols with workflow uh, with uh, workflows and, um, and handover through packages with BIM 360 design. We're really trying to enrich that design data the whole time so that there is no fallback on 2D information anymore. We can extract 2D information, we can take 2D information to the construction site, but everything is still connected to that single source of truth um, with uh, uh, 3D information, building information, modeling uh, um, data at the core of the story. And so as I mentioned, the, um, the core of this solution is indeed BIM 360. Uh, where we have specific tools for the different um, aspects of the design process and the construction process. So right at the beginning, there's obviously the design from conceptual into detailed design. We're gonna move over to 
well, is this thing buildable? Do we have clashes, etc.? Finally, we move into the actual construction, checklists, um, um, progress tracking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So commissioning of objects. Um, so that's really field execution, and then finally handover and operations. So as I mentioned from the first uh, schematic that you just saw uh, a slide ago, essentially what we're doing is we're bringing everything together. That's really what BIM 360 is all about. It's a common data platform, a single source of truth with everything that we have on top of it, which is um, addressable, if you will, which is uh, uh, usable from a, an API point of view, which really is what, what Forge is all about. So I'm gonna, I'm moving fast over those different disciplines. We really wanna get to the on-premise solution and how we can connect it to BIM 360, but this is just uh, the overview of what we've done in the last uh, five uh, webinars, if you will. So essentially what we've been talking about in those last five webinars was really the concept of BIM 360 design, connecting Revit into BIM 360, uh, not just Revit, uh, there's also Civil 3D and Plan 3D that we can hook up to BIM 360. Uh, then clash detection, which I've uh, shown in the uh, last session, if I'm not mistaken, so BIM 360 coordinate. We've talked about digital twin and how we can enrich that data using Forge to come to actual maintenance of a, of a, of a building uh, using sensor data and what have you. Um, but of course, we need to build it. So we've, we've touched a little bit on BIM 360 built and at the bottom, at the core of it all is this single source of truth, this platform in the cloud, which is BIM 360 Docs. So that's uh, what we've been focusing on for the last um, couple of sessions, if you will. So if we then go and have a look at, okay, so there are on-premise solutions. So on-premise essentially means um, the company itself is responsible for the data. Uh, it essentially means uh, it's uh, most of the time a client server application. You've got the server internally to the company and everyone is connecting to it. So in that respect, for instance, that's why we asked the question, Windows Explorer is a client server application because the server is the file store and the clients are the mapped drives, if you will. So from that point of view, uh, that could be one way of uh, managing your data, of course. Uh, some of the more advanced tools out there are proper uh, project management solutions, uh, EDM solutions, uh, engineering data management or electronic document management solutions. Uh, one of them is uh, Autodesk Fault. So Autodesk Fault is really the on-premise solution that we've been promoting as Autodesk uh, for the last uh, well, 15 to 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. And essentially, if you look at the Volt product strategy, it's about, uh, as I mentioned, a single source of truth indeed, but within the company. And when I say within the company, it essentially means that the company can have multiple sites. Um, it can uh, be spread across the globe. Um, so one aspect of the, the product strategy is also that it's a flexible and scalable uh, solution. So we can have replication of data, we can have replication of documents across uh, multiple sites across uh, the globe. Uh, and very important also is, of course, the, um, the adaptation, the adoption of, uh, of the tool within uh, the company. Uh, so right out of the box, design tool integration is critical to that whole story, if you will. So that's really what Volt is all about. Uh, and by the way, Volt isn't going away from an Autodesk point of view. We are still developing this. Uh, we are still having a version 2021. There will be a version 2022, et cetera, et cetera. So this is very much still an, uh, a process that's uh, continuing to develop. So if you look at some of the functionality and we will dive into a little bit of this functionality for the uh, next couple of minutes or so, um, you'll see that there's um, some advanced search functionality, some reporting functionality. We have full-blown uh, granular security. You can assign it to users, uh, groups, uh, active directory users, et cetera, et cetera. So really coming back to that on-premise concept, integrating uh, this, uh, this EDM solution into existing uh, existing installations with, as I mentioned, Active Directory, et cetera, et cetera. Very important, as I mentioned, multi-site replication. Companies do tend to have, of course, multiple sites. So how do we connect them with this one solution within the company? So that's, uh, that's really what this is all about. Um, and as I mentioned, a reporting engine, which is uh, quite flexible. All right, other things that we have 
um, and that I'll show in a second is the relationship tracking. So for instance, AutoCAD XREFs to parents, uh, Revit uh, links to masters, uh, all of that is being traced inside of uh, um, Autodesk Vault. Uh, so as I mentioned, scale across multiple sites. Um, essentially, what you'll see that Vault is, is it's, uh, it's essentially in the background, it's a database, a SQL database with a file store next to it. File store cannot be approached other than through the Vault interface uh, and through searching for documents through the SQL database. So if you look at it in the background, this, is, this has got nothing to do with the day-to-day -day user, but in the background, it is a database, a SQL database that talks to a file store, if you will. So essentially, that means if you have multiple sites, that um, we, need, we need means of uh, shifting massive amounts of data across multiple sites. And so there are a couple of uh, solutions within Vault. So first of all, if you do want to have this one-off communication with an external user who's got nothing to do with the company, then we do have a, a web interface. Um, if the data is limited in file size and it's a, it's a remote uh, site, if you will, to the company, then yes, we could use VPN and just install Vault clients on this uh, remote location. Um, now, if there is a lot of traffic, if you will, concerning the searching of metadata, the searching of, uh, of, of documents, then we can indeed have uh, replication in place. And the first one is, um, obviously, if you look at the database and the file store, where's going to be the most amount of data? Well, obviously, in the files. Those are the Revit files, the AutoCAD files, the Navisworks files, uh, I don't know, Bentley MicroStation files, IFC files, et cetera, et cetera. So most of this data is stored actually in the design itself and not really in the database because that's just uh, the attributes attached to documents. And you'll see all of this in a second, right? Uh, so essentially the first step that we can do is replication of files between sites. So essentially it means the database is still central. People still search the database, but once they have a file, it's actually getting pulled from the local location. Next step up is indeed, uh, well, we've got a database, we've got the files, but let's say that we have a connection which is really unreliable when it comes to uh, web access, to uh, internet service provider access, then what we might want to do is do a full replication of not just files, but also the database. And then we're going to claim parts of the database, look through that information, open files, uh, all of that locally, and replication is happening automatically and transparently in the background. And the fourth one is, well, all of this is still very much the one company who's looking after its data. If you really want to have a process in place where different um, partners, if you will, different stakeholders are going to connect to one another, then that's the BIM 360 story. And what you'll see in a second is that we can indeed connect um, a vault automatically to the cloud, if you will. So let's just stop here for a second. And let's just go into that solution, if you will. So what you'll see here is one of the clients, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the clients that connect to the database and the file store. This is what we call Vault Explorer. And what you'll see is that, as I mentioned, it's a client server application. So many, um, many of the connections, or I should say all of the connections uh, within a company are indeed a client to Vault. Uh, so, for instance, if I go into Revit, what you'll see is that we also have a Vault client connection. If I go actually into PowerPoint, then you'll see that we also have a Vault, power, um, a Vault client connection. If I was to go into Outlook, there is a Vault client connection. So basically, we can hook up everything to Vault. So in that respect, it is very much as BIM 360, but as I mentioned, on-premise. Um, so essentially what we can do is we can completely configure the system as we see fit. So I can have folders, I can have subfolders, I can define projects. Uh, the one thing that you'll notice is that the second if that I go into my files here, so for instance, supermarket structure, you'll see that we have these uh, properties to the right. So you'll see system. So these are system defined properties, anything that is like the timestamp of the document uh, the user who created it, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is system-based. But then again, we can have our own user-defined properties, such as, for instance, the site location, such as the project number, the owner, et cetera, the discipline, engineer, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these properties we can um, 
we can define inside of the system. This is again customizable, which essentially means that we can use that to uh, search for files. So I could actually go in here and say find, uh, let's say that I want to have a file which says, um, I don't know, pump, find now, and you'll see that it returns um, some information here. And most of them, as you'll see, they have pump in the title, but there's actually one which is an inventor part which doesn't have pump in the title. So we're looking for other stuff here. So if I want to reach out to this file, if I want to find this file, all I need to do is just select this, go to folder, and it will jump in the system, designs, chiller, this part. We've selected it. So essentially it means that we can now look at the properties. And what you'll see is that, for instance, if I just change this a little bit, then you'll see that in description, it says diffuser, pump suction, et cetera, et cetera. So we retrieve the information from that uh, environment, okay. Uh, other things, as I said, I'm not gonna uh, spend too much time on Vault in its own right. It is uh, quite a powerful tool. It will manage all of the information. I just wanna give you a highlight of some of the aspects uh, inside of, um, of Vault here. So for instance, one of the other things that we can do is we can have a look at, for instance, my supermarket uh, MEP.RVT file. So this is a proper Revit file, you'll see in a second, I'm gonna open this uh, in a second in Revit. Um, we've got the metadata, this metadata can be pulled from the Revit uh, project information, for instance, automatically assigned to those attributes. You'll also see uh, a listing, a history of everything that we've done to the file. So what you'll see is that we have versions, we have revisions, we have all kinds of columns information, basically attributes that we can show in here. So we have the full history of what has happened to this project and this, uh, this file, if you will. So if I take another one, then you'll see, for instance, we're at version 26, we've got revision F. And if I just go down the bottom here, then you'll see we've got uh, version 18, which is revision E, et cetera, et cetera. So we do have revision systems inside of Vault. Those are, again, customizable. They're actually, um, they can be assigned to the type of um, object that we're looking at. So essentially the basis of, uh, <clears throat> of Vault is for instance, if I go into maybe, let's see, uh, published, let's see what we have here. Uh, essentially what I can do is let's just, uh, good buy box, let's get this out. Essentially what I can do is I can start filtering my data according to um, properties. So you'll see that I have uh, entity type here. Uh, one of the other things I can do now is I can say, okay, customize view. And maybe what I wanna do is I wanna add some fields here. So the category name, for instance, that's one that's of interest to me. Okay, close. And so what you'll see is that it says category name, uh, it's gonna be listed here. So what's a category name? A category name is essentially the type of document that we want in the system. Um, so let me give you an example. Let's say that we have two Word files, right? One is an email uh, or a minutes of meeting and the other one is a uh, pipe specification, for instance. So what we really wanna do inside of Vault is per type of document, per business logic of those documents, we wanna attach the attributes, we want to attach the revision system and we want to attach the uh, approval system. So essentially, even though you have two documents of the same type, Word files, they might have a different business logic attached to them. And that's really what the category name is. And by the way, vice versa, right? Let's say that I have an engineering category type and that could be a DWG or a Revit file. So different extensions can have the same type of category. So that's what you see here. And so what I can do now is I can actually just drag this in. And what you'll see is that it's now gonna filter. That's this group by box that I just activated. It's just gonna group everything according to this set. So what you'll see is that the entity type is file. So we do have different uh, entity types inside of um, Vault. Uh, and in this case, I've just sorted them dynamically according to, to category name. So published IP safety manual, supermarket, DWFX, 
those are of the same time, which essentially means they'll have the same type of attributes, they have, they'll have the same type of workflow attached, they'll have the same type of revision system attached to them. So that's essentially what's, uh, what's happening here. So if I now go back, last thing I wanna show you here. So essentially the category or the group buy box is still the same here. So what I can do now is if I look at this file, um, you'll see that it says here uses and where used. So that's another aspect of hope that I want to touch upon. So what you'll see is that if I go in uses, then the supermarket MEP file is using the supermarket structure file, which is just sitting next to it, right? And if I open this, then that's it. So the bottom one, the linked file is supermarket structure. So it's tracing relationships between different files. So supermarket MEP, supermarket structure, is at the basis here. So just as I did with the searching, all I need to do is right click, go to folder, and it's actually jumping to that supermarket structure file. Okay, so, which is no rocket science, right? It was sitting next to it. So it just jumped from MEP to structure. So what I can do now is go the other way around. So I can now say, okay, the supermarket structure file, where is this being used actually? Okay, so this structure file is being used in the MEP file. It's being used in the architectural file. And actually the MEP file is being used in the architectural file itself. And actually the architectural file is also being used in a published NWC file, which is being used in a master file. So, okay, so this is actually the top, if you will. So if I now go right click, go to folder, it's actually gonna jump to Navisworks, in my case, Millennium Supermarket.nwf. If I now go uses, and I go uh, in here and I just say expand all, then you'll see the whole BIM structure, if you will, of my project. The Millennium Supermarket Navisworks file holds a published NWD file, holds a civil site design file, holds the architectural NWC file, which was extracted from the petrol station, et cetera, et cetera. Even 3ds Max files, uh, everything can be connected here. And in one blink of an eye, obviously, you'll see, okay, what's a work in progress, what's approved, what's released, who's using this. Obviously this is a one user environment, my own demo environment, so it's all administrator. That's how I'm logged in here, what you'll see at the bottom here, administrator. Okay, so that's what you see here. And of course we can still jump to any one of those, look at the history, so we get a full audit trail, if you will, of everything that's inside of the system. Last thing I want to show here as the basic concept of all, well, there's a lot more to it, of course, but uh, what you've seen is that we can search for information uh, and let's just quickly do that again. So what I can do is I can search for uh, any of the information inside of the attributes. What we can also do is a full-blown advanced uh, property search. So I could say, okay, uh, let's say that my state uh, contains uh, work at right now. So you'll see that I now have 398 objects which have probably a state work in progress or uh, worked upon or whatever it depends on uh, the type of um, um, approval uh, workflows that we've defined. Uh, the interesting thing as well is that uh, from this point onwards with those two, 398 objects I can actually go in report and I can take one of the reports that come out of the box. Now, these are customizable. So I can have a file transmittal. Maybe I want to transmit these files to someone else by email in a zip file or whatever. Uh, I can attach a file transmittal to that. So let's just run this maybe, okay. And it's now going to generate that report. So what you'll see is that I just basically, in this case, get listing. Uh, there's four sheets here for, uh, uh, yeah, four sheets with, uh, with the different um, files listed. Uh, this is a basic report, right? We can take this to the next level. And actually, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to show that on this uh, set of uh, elements that we have. Let's say that I want to have an overview, a bit like what you see here. <clears throat> What's the overview of my whole environment? So what I can do is I can actually go in here on the project explorer level. And maybe uh, I just wanna understand where my projects are going. So then second step where we find reporting 
is when I'm not selecting a file, but I'm selecting a folder. And you'll see the interface at the bottom is changing a little bit. We don't get the uh, uses where used. We basically have, as a first step, again, the reporting. So think of uh, everything inside of projects now as documents and folders that I'm interested in. So from this project's point onwards, what I can do is, let's just go and configure here. And what I want to have is, uh, in this case, my project dashboard. There we go. And I want to include subfolders. I want to include dependents. So think of links uh, to, to, to uh, child files, etc. But we can also include links to uh, what we have inside a vault called change orders. Uh, folders, items, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm just going to basically run this report. So every, so essentially, it's now going to search through all projects, and it's going to give me a listing of um, of the status of all my uh, projects, if you will. Um, again, this is customizable. If it says Autodesk here at the top, that's because the logo is inside of this report. You can fully customize this. Do you want bar diagrams or pie charts or 3D pie charts or whatever? All of this is uh, customizable. <clears throat> So you'll see we get the project dashboard. We get the different types of uh, document types that we have. Remember that I mentioned everything is related to the document type. Um, what files are checked out? Uh, if you have uh, workflows, you can actually look at dates when something was uh, released, uh, work in progress, et cetera, et cetera. And this is sort of an overview page sheet. Uh, you'll see that we have 26 pages of them. So I can actually go down and say, you know what, I want to see those released ones. And it's going to jump to that sheet which holds the release documents. And what you'll see is it's got supermarket footprint .dwg, engineering release. So that's uh, that's what we have here. Okay, so uh, if I go to sent external, for instance, we have a workflow status called sent external. So this is probably sent to the customer at some point in time. You'll see this, uh, uh, you'll see when this has happened. <clears throat> Lastly, what we can also do is we can actually save this as Excel or PDF forward. So think of this. Let's say that we run this report on a weekly basis, right? So week one, we run this report, we've got five files. Week two, we run this report, we've got 100 files. Week 27, we've got 1,500 files. Uh, if we export this to PDF each and every time and actually we store this again in the system as dashboard reporting or whatever, Everything's versioned, right? So essentially what you'll see is that we get dashboards uh, being reported on each and every week and we get a status uh, continuation um, through time, if you will. So that's also possible here. Um, the last thing I wanna address here is people tend to say, yeah, but this is a, this is a manufacturing tool, it comes from manufacturing. And absolutely, that's where it originated from. So. It is something that is uh, that was developed for mechanical desktop, for Inventor, but we've expanded its functionality to support, uh, for instance, Navisworks, to support, for instance, Revit. So if I go in Revit here, and what you'll see is, well, actually, let's first go into Project A101, Revit. So this file here, for instance, Supermarket MEP, let's, uh, let's have a look at that file. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go into Vault, and I'm going to go Open from Vault, and we're going to go into Projects A101 Revit. So that's essentially the same one, right? Projects A101 Revit, Supermarket MEP, let's just open this. So it's now opening this file directly from Vault, and you'll see that Vault is still very much managing this. So if I refresh this, then you'll see suddenly it says, okay, this is Vault blue which essentially means i'm opening this and it's got a checkbox to it which essentially means it is open for editing by that user which user would that be well created by administrator so we're immediately creating a new version it's a sort of placeholder and we can do stuff uh, to it uh, other people will actually see that this is uh, with a bar through it it's grayed out it's still bold and it's going to tell other people that somebody's working on this uh, Revit file. By the way, this interface, because this very much looks like a standalone Revit, this system also works with um, um, central files and Revit server files. And I'll get to that in a second when we talk about how we push information into BIM 360. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show here is if I'm gonna go activate view, maybe I wanna change this bend, right? And what you'll notice is that we've got a couple of them in here, but none of them 
have something in the title called uh, schematic or SCH or something like that. Uh, and actually that's the one that I want to have, for instance, just as an example. So what we can do is from Vault, we also manage families. So what you'll see is that if I go in admin, libraries, Revit, uh, you'll see that I just basically took the, the, the default uh, Revit families and they're all inside here. So you'll see the bifold panel, .rfa, et cetera, et cetera. So what we can do here is I can say, okay, I wanna um, go in here and I wanna load a family from Vault. We are in the Vault tab, so load family. And I'm gonna say, right, the first thing that I'm sure of is that it's a pipe fitting, right? So I'm just gonna go for pipe fittings and it's gonna list me 186. Okay, I know it's bent, that's for sure, it's a bent. So I'm just gonna search for bends, that's that one. And well, it's sanitary, so probably we're gonna be using PVC. So we've got our six elements here, and this is the PVC SCH40 that I want to have. So I'm just going to load it from Vault, you know. So if I just select this now, oops, and I go in here, then you'll see that it's just loaded this SCH41. I can deactivate this view, and I can actually save this file back to Vault. That would generate a full-blown new uh, version inside of Vault. We can actually offer this to uh, our BIM coordinator. Uh, the one thing I didn't specify is that all of these um, um, documents, they also come with a preview of you. So I can actually go in here and have a look at my file. Um, this is a lightweight version. It's actually a DWF that's automatically generated in the background, but it's got all of the information inside. So it's a lightweight format. I can actually go in here and what I can do is I can look at properties, for instance. So let's just go in here, object properties. Okay, if I select this, then you'll see that we got all the properties inside here. All right, so that's just a very brief overview of, uh, of Vault of what we have here. Let's just close this down. I'm not going to save this right now, so I'm just going to close this. So guess what? What happens inside of Vault? So we were at version 26, right? If I just refresh this, then it's going to tell me that that version is now, um, well, the original one that we had before. It's not being saved or anything. So that's uh, that's quite good. Okay, so moving forward, uh, the mixed environment. So how do we hook up such a system to BIM 360? And you'll see I've been spending quite a bit of time on Vault, obviously. But you'll see that what I'm about to do is uh, quite possible with other solutions as well. So essentially what we want to do now is this one company with this uh, on-premise solution, maybe potentially multiple uh, sites that are working on, let's say, DMEP design or whatever, we really want to get everyone together. Maybe visualization is of importance, definitely the structural stuff will be of importance, um, and the architectural uh, hull, if you will. All of this needs to be connected together, and this is probably multiple companies, right? So. Uh, let's let's look at this from an almost philosophical point of view. Let's assume for a second that all of these different parts to the design there are one company. Okay, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of theoretical model, almost philosophical. Uh, let's assume all of these are one company, and the workflow that we're going to be having then is that this uh, these will definitely all have their own view on the building, right? Uh, from a structural point of view, from a contractor's point of view, the phasing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and essentially, you know, uh, communication through files and through screenshots and through minutes of meeting and et cetera, et cetera. It will, in an ideal world, start with the owner, the project manager, and they're going to give their and communicate their ideas to the other ones, uh, to the architect, engineer, contractor, et cetera, et cetera. What you'll also notice is that I've already assigned everyone, right? It's one company, the contractor is there, subcontractor is there. And in the real world, well, probably contractors are gonna step in, let's just say a bit later than the rest. Usually uh, design is already somewhere at its finishing point and then contractors come in. But let's start with this ideal world. Uh, owner has communicated everything to the rest of the disciplines. Um, the architect has its own idea of what that building should look like. They'll have their initial communication. Once that's finished, they're going to communicate, right, we need the calculations. 
and Mr. Contractor, here's uh, the design that we've uh, come up with. So engineers are going to do the structural design, um, the HVAC design, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they're going to communicate. Guys, this is what you need to build. Contractor is going to communicate with the different subcontractors that are going to build those systems. And essentially, in the ideal world, that's uh, that's the end of the story. Now, in reality, um, things are a little bit different. You know, it's a bit more chaotic. Uh, people jump in from time to time. They're leaving from time to time. New companies get assigned. Other companies um, get pulled because their job is finished. And so, essentially, uh, we can still we can still work with this, right? If we have this one company, then it's quite easy, right? We're going to take all of this information. And we're going to store this inside of our on-premise system, which in our case is Vault, right? We're going to take those files, those different BIM models. They're all going to be inside of our on-premise system. Everyone connected to that. But unfortunately, that's not reality because we will have different companies that aren't part of this story and that will at some point in time jump in uh, after that original design is done. And that's really where we are going to connect uh, this whole BIM philosophy and Vault to the cloud with uh, BIM 360 Docs. So essentially what we're offering as Autodesk is a hybrid solution where yes, you can have Vault, yes, you can have BIM 360, and actually you can have a combination of both. And I'm just going to illustrate this with a uh, video here. So this is that same environment, right, Vault. Um, and what you'll see is I didn't really talk about this uh, in, in the previous uh, part, but one of the most powerful things inside of Vault is sort of the equivalent of Forge and Webhooks, which I've talked about uh, two sessions ago. Uh, essentially, we can have the system listen to certain tasks. And in the case of Vault, we call that jobs. And what you'll see is that we can have a job queue and we're gonna have a server, which is called the job processor. Um, essentially, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking at the collaborative aspect with BIM 360. So out of the box, we have this collaborate tab in Vault, which is going to tell us this is the shared folder, and we're going to go to a cloud drive, which is going to be, in our case, a project inside of BIM 360. So all we need to do is set up this configuration, and the beauty is that we can then sort of trigger according to a set um, combination of rules we can specify what document has to be pushed into the cloud or has to be pulled from the cloud. So in our case, we only want to have approved documents. So the filter here says for any document in a specific folder. So we can also specify which folders we want to sync and which ones we don't want to sync. So this folder needs to get synced with documents only where the state is released. So essentially, we can actually have a preview of that. So we're not doing anything. We just want to have a preview. And in our case, right now, it's going to turn up zero, nothing. OK, we're just going to move forward here a little bit. This is that file. And we're going to change its state. So that's an approval. It's now released. And if I go back here, so you'll see the same thing. So we're essentially now in the same location. We're going to do the preview again. This document is now released. So essentially, that is now going to work. Um, we can automate this and have it uh, pulled every five minutes or so. We're just going to push it uh, manually here. So we forced an upload. It is indeed going to take that file to BIM 360. So this is sort of our webhook, the equivalent of Forge. And what we're going to do is we're going to activate that equivalent. So we're running the server, and it's actually going to process this file, and it's going to push this file into BIM 360. And the way we do that, and this is where we're sort of moving to a generic environment. We're using something called desktop connector. So essentially, basically what this job is doing is it's taking this file and it's actually not pushing it to BIM 360. It's copying it into that virtual drive, which is desktop connector. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this, it's part of BIM 360. It is essentially a uh, local folder that gets synced into the cloud. So think of Dropbox with a sync folder. That's essentially what we do here. So essentially what this a task is doing is it's pulling the file, it's pushing it into that local sync folder, and uh, the, the sync folder is going to push the data into BIM 360. So that's a desktop connector uh, for you, and that's essentially what we're doing here. Right, so moving forward. So another couple of ideas. Maybe you do have already a cloud solution, maybe a generic cloud solution. 
Uh, and I say generic, it means it doesn't really have workflows uh, that support a, the AC industry. So SharePoint is, for instance, a, a, a very good tool, but when you drop a Revit file into it, it's not really making it visible or anything. So um, we're going to be looking at some solutions to uh, hook up local uh, systems, but also cloud systems to, for instance, uh, BIM 360. And one of them is ACC Connect, and there's another one. Um, well, there are a couple of uh, other ones, such as Cloudsphere, uh, third-party apps that I've used Forge to communicate between, let's say, a Windows folder or some other uh, cloud system with uh, BIM 360. But let's first have a look at ACC Connect. And essentially, what ACC Connect is allowing us to do is, for instance, uh, hook up PlanGrid, uh, one of our other offerings, to BIM 360 in a bi-directional way. But anything that we have out there, cloud storage, analytics, ERP systems, we can actually use ACC Connect to uh, connect those uh, systems together. So just in a nutshell, what is ACC Connect? It's a sort of wrapper around Forge. So if you're not eager to develop stuff through the API on Forge, this is a sort of built out um, set of commands built out of Forge where you only have to say, right, this is my SharePoint connection. This is my BIM 360 connection, go. That's essentially what this is uh, doing. And we call those recipes. We'll see that in a second. So we can have recipes that will take cloud um, data and push drawings into BIM 360 or documents into BIM 360 or plan grid. We can have an automated export from BIM 360 and plan grid to some cloud solution. Uh, in plan grid, we've got something called field reports and photos. We can actually take those specific um, elements and push them to the cloud, for instance, to any cloud solution out there. Um, other stuff that we can do is uh, maybe we want to have tasks and issues that we get from BIM 360 or PlanGrid and we want to hook them up to a project management system. Same for PlanGrid itself with RFIs and field reports. That's essentially what is happening here. So let's just uh, give you an example of this, right? So I'm just going to go out here for a second. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for a second at PlanGrid. And I'm not going to do a full-blown demo of PlanGrid here, but essentially uh, what you'll see is that we have a couple of tasks here. Assignments to certain users. And essentially what I want to do now is, well, actually I want to have this triggered from BIM 360. If I create an issue in BIM 360, it actually has to be an automated task inside of Plan Grid. So I'm going to go to ACC Connect here. And what you'll see is that um, this, is, this is ACC Connect. It's a web page. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to have recipes inside of this environment. So for instance, if I want to have uh, let's say uh, export plans to plan grid. So if I move drawings to plan grid, that might be a recipe. So if I click on this, then you'll see that it's got a whole workflow. And these are boxes, you know, you just configure them. You don't have to do any coding. You just say, right, I want to have this connected to BIM 360. I want to have this connected to plan grid. I want to trigger this every five minutes or when something happens, blah, blah, blah. So this is really a wrapper, as I mentioned, around which functionality. So I'm actually going to build a recipe for you guys. So I'm going to have something in here, uh, issues. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at this BIM 360 docs environment. And what you're going to see is that on this file, we're going to have a couple of issues. So table type, for instance, if I look at that, uh, it's going to tell the table type assigned to be fill out, due date, uh, October 22nd, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one of the issues here. So I want to pull them across to plan grid and make, um, make a task out of it. OK, so how do we do this? So I'm in issues here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my community here. I'm going to go into community, and I'm going to say, right, I want to hook up PlanGrid to BIM 360. And this is um, really the, the power of this thing. If you want to hook up Box to something, if you want to hook up Dropbox to something, or OneDrive, or SharePoint, or whatever, Outlook, you just select the tools that you need. So I'm just going to go BIM360. Thank you very much. OK, these are re uh, recipes that have BIM360 in it. But I want to filter more. I'm not going to go to DocuSign or anything. So yes, we can have electronic documents sign off uh, through BIM360 and DocuSign. In my case, I want to filter out these two. So right out of the box, 
new or updated issue in BIM 360 will create task in plan grid. Yep, that's the one I need. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, right, I'm gonna use this recipe. And you see, it's not complicated. It's one box that basically connects to BIM 360, searches for issues and then creates tasks in plan grid. So yes, please use this recipe. Okay, and now it's telling me, well, you got the code, but obviously you need to tell me where I need to look for issues and you need to tell me where I need to drop those issues. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, right, I've already built these connections. And basically that's just saying, right, this is my environment and <clears throat> this is my credential. These are my credentials. That's basically it. Same thing here. So I'm just going to go in and say, IVT plan grid, and you'll see it says, okay, this is connected now, right. So next step, next, is that it's gonna prepare this and it's gonna tell me test recipe. Now I'm sure that I didn't really specify an environment just yet, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, right, hub name, uh, and you see, it's really just a matter of configuration. All of this give me a TS, project name, bin 360 overall backup, and that's it. That's all I need to do here. And plan grid, I'm gonna go in and say, right, plan grid FY21, that's the one. Okay, save. And just from a, a management point of view, this is now stored in a specific folder. It's this one, you are updated issues. I really wanna get this into my own folders here. So if you have issues, I'm just gonna drag this in. There we go. This is now nicely managed through this uh, folder structure in the cloud. And all I need to do now is I can now go in and say this one, start the recipe. Okay. So it said updated or uh, new um, um, issues. So we're now going to go in and I'm going to go, let's see, uh, document management, this guy here. Let's see if we can get this to work. Issues, oops, issues. There we go. Table type uh, assigned to. Let's just change this date to the 23rd. Location, uh, let's say, a description. This is a test. There we go. That's it. Check now. Okay. Let's. I'm not going to wait for this to check. Let's just briefly create or rapidly create a new issue. Uh, create issue. There we go. Uh, title test IDT. Assign to myself, due date, uh, I don't know, this one. Okay, owner, root cause, uh, constructability, create. There we go. Let's see what happens now. Check now. Uh, that's good. Okay, let me just quickly get this. Uh, da -da -da -da. Stop this for a second and I'm going to edit this. Uh, this one, let's put this away. There we go. Save. Okay, and exit and start this recipe again. Okay, found two jobs. So the reason this wasn't working was because there was a, a time set, which was uh, for some reason later than uh, what I just created. So what you'll see is now it says new or updated, new or updated. So that's done essentially. So let's have a look at plan grid here. And if I just refresh, so let's just go from RFIs to tasks again. Then what you'll see is that it says table type test IPT. So that's uh, what we have here. So that's really what this is uh, all about. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one. Um, essentially, this is how we hook up uh, Revit server to um, BIM 360, uh, because what you'll see is that there is a tool to extract 
um, a Revit file out of Revit server. It's going to generate it in a folder and we're going to use the exact same philosophy, but this time through CloudSphere. So this is a forged uh, a tool that will allow us to um, take data from a folder and push it into BIM 360. And so that's, uh, that's what you see here. So this is a third party developer uh, who built something very specific for, uh, for connecting a Windows Explorer folder to BIM 360. So with that, I'm going to stop here. So we've given you a, a bit of an overview as to potentially how you can move data from an on-premise solution. So whether that be file uh, Windows Explorer or some indeed basic cloud-based solution, there are tools out there um, that can help you to push data into BIM 360. So with that, uh, if there are any questions, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, Yes. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. We have a couple of questions in different okay. levels, so mm -hmm. so let's try to take them. And and of course, if you can't really respond on that, me maybe do a one to one response if you need to do some kind of investigation furthermore. Yeah. But uh, the first question is: uh, Can you use ISO nineteen six fifty revision sequences like uh, P zero one, P zero two, etc.? Because you showed yeah. in the vault area revision sequences A, B, C. Yeah, absolutely. So those are uh, configurable. So if I want to have 1.1, 1 1.2, 8.1, 8.2, uh, that's all possible. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Another question uh, um, like this. You, you talked about central files from Revit in Vault, mm -hmm. but do mm -hmm. that works? I thought that you check out files from Vault and that does not yeah. work with central files in yeah, Vault absolutely. since every user yeah. has got a local copy of their own. Yeah. That's uh, That person is absolutely correct. So the workflow for central files is a little bit different. So essentially what happens is that um, at some point in time uh, when you publish, no sorry, if you hit save to central, that's how I should uh, put it. If You know what, is Revit still open? I'm just briefly going to show you uh, options. What you'll see is that it says here, um, uh, where is it? Always upload on synchronization with central. So if I hit save to central, essentially what's happening is that Volt is going to communicate with Revit server and it's going to ask for a file and that's going to be pushed into, uh, into Volt as a new version, if you will. So that's, uh, that's what's going to happen there. Uh, there's a lot more to it because you can, you might be wondering. So if I every time we hit save to central, that's going to generate a new version. So there are some workflows um, that um, well that will streamline this process. But the short answer is yes, it's absolutely possible. But no, it's not through checkout and check in. Uh, it's a little bit different because you know Revit server is different than a standalone file, but it's possible. Thanks, Dave. And another more, let's say, a clarification question. In Vault, there is a tab called CAD Boom. I suppose that is the bill of material. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there is more functionality to Vault than just managing uh, files. There's uh, there's uh, engineering change orders. There's bill of material. So there's a couple of things we can do there. Yeah. Another one. Uh, what is the main difference between Plan Grid and BIM 360? <laughs> Okay, so uh, Plan Grid is, an, uh, I think, in a nutshell, in a couple of minutes here, uh, Plan Grid is geared towards subcontractors, whereas BIM 360 is geared more towards contractors. So essentially, the focus of Plan Grid is on sheets, 2D information, a rapid communication between the different stakeholders, creating those tasks, as you've seen, taking pictures on a construction site. It's a mobile first application, if you will. So it's really focusing on, we need to be there on the construction side, ASAP, as fast as possible, with a system that will follow and manage the data. So the, the basic aspect of Plan Grid is it's easy to set up and it tracks everything that needs to happen on a construction site. Whereas BIM 360 also has a cost module. It allows you to hook up with the designers. So it's a more full-blown workflow. It's, it's geared more towards um, the, the main disciplines, main contractor, designers, et cetera, et cetera. But the two of them talk together. That's what I've just shown you with uh, ACC Connect. Great. Another question. I don't know if I fully understand. Hope you will do. Otherwise, we <laughs> need to get more, more insight sure. on that. Sure. But is the 
example, is all the data in the issue from BIM 360 took over by Plan Grid? Oh, right, yeah. Um, well, actually, I didn't really go into that, but what you'll see is, uh, da -da -da, where is it, recipe? If you take a look at this, then see this? And again, this is Forge in the background, but it's just configuration, you know? So this specific recipe tells me that it needs the location from the issue and it needs the due at so the due date from the issue. Um, anything else you could actually um, configure this and say, okay, so for instance, this one, select status. Status is forced to be open and the type is forced to be an issue type. So you can actually pull information from the issue because uh, that's the information that's being pulled across. And uh, we can then populate the plan grid um, task, if you will. It depends on the recipe that you're using, but that data can come from the issue, yes. Thanks, Ace. Uh, I can see we are top on an hour, uh, so we, we may close this uh, session. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you all attendees. Uh, we will for sure have some more webinars. We are going to plan for future webinars. And if you have some ideas what you want to look into to have a theme on the webinars, so please uh, please let us know. After this uh, webinar, you will also receive an email uh, that you also can, uh, let's say, bring in your topics on that as well. Uh, any final words from you, Yves? Uh, well, thank you all. Uh, this is sort of the end of the series that we've uh, geared towards BIM 360, as Jonas is mentioning. We're going to have a think about what we want to uh, bring to the table for some next webinars. But as a series, this is the end of it. So I would encourage you all to um, look at that website where we had the registrations for the six webinars. So three on BIM 360 design, then one on digital twin, uh, one on the on the a single source of truth, if you will, and then from on-premise to cloud. So if you haven't seen all of them, I would encourage you to have a look at those because they have some valuable, valuable information to bring all the pieces together. And with that, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to one another uh, in the future, hopefully on some other webinars. Thank you.